Hey guys, what's going on? Drewsy here, back again with another South Park Phone Destroyer video. And I just want to do a really quick video for this episode specifically, because there was a kind of a relatively big update that's going to be coming out uh, as far as some balance changes, and then a new card's going to be coming to the game. Jew Scout Ike is finally here, guys. This is the one we've been waiting for for quite a while now. It's been heavily requested by fans of the game, uh, myself included. I've been saying that this card has been needed to come out for a long time now, but we've gotten stuff like Classy, like uh, Forehass Monkey, uh, Alien Drone, a bunch of random cards that, in all honesty, didn't make any sense to me. Uh, Dragon Slayer Red has been also a fan favorite that's been needed to come out for a while. Of course, she did a couple of uh, you know cards ago. Uh, Shelly finally came out, and then now Juice Scout Ike's Time to Shine is here. So let's look at the weekly timetable table real quick so there's going to be a uh, of course the team wars voting days are today and tomorrow and then there's going to be the upgrade days on wednesday thursday friday like always the fighters challenge is going to be the challenge mode for wednesday and thursday and then there will be uh friday saturday sunday for the team of for the wars there will be the battle days of course on saturday and sunday and then there will be for the weekend event Juice scout ike will be involved in that and it looks like it will be a token event based on uh the icon there on screen so as mentioned above, the brand new card is coming this weekend. The highly requested Jew Scout Ike, or Scout Ike, I guess. So they just took the Jew part out. So it's just Scout Ike. So I, I apologize. I'm already mispronouncing it apparently right off the bat. Mystical users will be excited to see this brand new common assassin. He has a charge ability similar to those of the other Ike cards. This one will focus on energy regeneration. So probably not to the same extent of Hermes Kenny, but probably fairly similar as far as he gets one energy per charge so uh like like they say here can't wait to see the sweet combinations with santa and mr hanky something that i feel like a decent amount of people might try out at least to see you know how efficient it could be and how much energy you could actually get i feel like this would be actually really good for like the free-to-play style players especially for snoozy i feel like this would be great for my free-to-play account and more free-to-play players because common cards are fairly easy to level up easy to request uh and stuff like that and as long as you get one copy of juice of scout hike um, it's going to take some, some time for me to not say it incorrectly. It's going to take you, uh, once you unlock Scout Ike one time, then you don't have to worry about it uh, going forward. It's just going to be a card that you're going to have in your rotation or available to you in all packs, uh, unlike before. On Tuesday, we'll have the 24-hour card use event, followed by the Fighter's Challenge on Wednesday. For this challenge, all fighter cards will have their stats increased by 30%. So that should be base attack and base health as well. So that means, like... Terrence and Phillip are going to be even more destructive by 30%, 30% stronger. Uh, there's going to be a ton of cards. It's going to be interesting to see, as, assuming they'll be pretty much all fighter decks. I'm sure you'll see a lot of Shield Maiden Wendy. I'm sure there's a lot of variety there. Uh, maybe Witch Doctor Token. There's a lot of chances here for all that stuff. Uh, and then the Team Wars is going on. Be sure to get your votes in, collect the bottle caps, blah, blah, blah. But here is the big last part that we're going to discuss in this short video is the balance changes. With next week's reset, we'll have some much requested buffs for the adventure theme. Because the adventure theme is the worst theme in the game. Hands down. Ink and Craig is probably the worst legendary card in the game. He's getting a fairly decent buff. Base HP is increased to 350 from 210. Base attack increased from 30 to 28. And base Warcry damage increased from 200 to 150, or from 150 to 200. And Warcry line width increased by 50%. That is insane. So it's going to be double the beam size. And then, of course, the buffs to his HP is going up, what, 140? His attack's going up 2, and then his war cry damage is going up 50. So that, Ink and Craig, you got a level 3 Ink and Craig line around, which I know not everybody does, and probably not very many people have. You got a level 3 Ink and Craig line around, he might be viable now. Yeah, that's no joke right there. That uh, Especially the war cry line, that's been the biggest issue I've had with him for the longest time, is his war, is his war cry line being too small, being too narrow, and it's not really hitting a whole bunch of units. I'm kind of surprised, honestly, that the Warcry damage is being increased. Obviously, that is the Warcry damage to units, not the Warcry damage to the enemy new kid. So take that into consideration. It does not mean he's doing 200 new kid damage. It means he's doing 200 damage, base damage, for, at level 1, base level 1, to enemy units. So remember, take that into consideration. Ink and Craig's damage to the new kid is not changing, which is fine, and it shouldn't. Uh, but yeah, so Ink and Craig looks like he's getting a pretty decent buff there. Pokemon's Rainy base attack increased from 60, from 40 up to 60, so up 20, and charge time decreased to 13 seconds from 14. Indian Brave spawn unit attack range increased from 0.5 to 0.8. So he's going to get a faster, uh, uh, one of the biggest problems for Pokemon's Rainy, honestly, is the spawn rate of the unit more so than the charge time of his spawn. 
That's my big problem is that Sexy Nun Randy gets his unit out way too fast compared to Pocahontas Randy. So that's going to be... Honestly, I think that that is where the change needed to be more so than his charge time itself, but uh, we'll see if that actually makes Pocahontas Randy more viable. Smuggler Ike base Warcry attack boost is getting bumped up or doubled back. Remember, this was a big thing where Smuggler Ike's Warcry was dr dropped down significantly. It's being brought back up a little bit. I don't know if it's being brought back to its original stat. I don't think so. I think it's about in between as far as the nerf that he received, which was a huge nerf that he got to that, which basically made him almost unplayable. I don't think this is going to change anything with Smuggler Ike. Uh, Medicine Woman Sharon's base attack is being upped 8 from 20 to 28. Base HP increased from 126 to 180. Charge ability time decreased to 10 seconds from 12.5. And base heal is increased from 36 to 60. So Medicine Woman Sharon will be better. I don't think this will make her meta. But to uh, at least a couple of people that constantly tell me in my live streams that Medicine Woman Sharon is a car that I need to get my, you know, get get my head around. Uh, she's at least going to be better. Uh, again, I don't know if this is going to make her playable. The only card here that I really see a significant positive change for is Incan Craig. And he's a legendary card, which generally means that those are the ones that they favor most. So there's that. So... What do you guys think of these balance changes? What do you guys think of Scout Ike coming into the game? I need to make sure that I ingrain this in my head to, to call it the right thing. I also just noticed he's a 3 energy cost. So that kind of stinks. So not a 2 energy cost like most of the common assassins are. I mean, obviously Deckhand Butters is a common assassin at 3 energy cost, and there might be another one that I'm missing. Uh, but uh, 3 energy cost, I just now noticed that. So that's a little mildly disappointing. And if you want to join the official Discord for Ubisoft, there is all their terms of service that you have to acknowledge and yada yada to join that Discord server. But that's open to the public now if anyone wants to join it other than just content creators. So there you go, guys. There's the weekly timetable. What do you guys think of the new card? What do you guys think of the balance changes? Uh, I, I think the balance changes are a positive step in the right direction for a couple of these cards. The one thing that I've continued to state, Red Link, stop changing just four cards every seasonal reset. You need to change significantly more than that. There are way more cards than just these four that need changes done to them. So hopefully in the future... 10 or more are, are done, because in reality, there's probably about 15 cards right now that need changes, and, th you know, at least three of them for sure are being addressed in this balance changes with Mess Woman, Sharon, Pocahontas, Rainy, and Ink and Craig. They're not in a good place right now. But there are still a lot, not only in the adventure theme, but in other themes that still need balance changes immensely. This is not enough. For each season is not enough. It needs to it needs to be more, in my opinion. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, you know, what do I know, I guess? But thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this uh, helps you guys out. I hope you guys are excited about the new card. I'm I'm excited for it, at least on my free-to-play account, not so much on my main account. But thank you guys for watching. Until next time, guys, my name is Jersey.